So good morning from New Mexico. So I wanted to talk to you today about um, a national park that I just recently visited. And I found this park to be one of the most photogenic parks I have ever been in. And that is White Sands National Park. So what makes White Sands so photogenic? Well, you've got these beautiful white gypsum sand dunes that just go on for miles. And to the west, you have the San Andreas Mountains that serve as a backdrop. On the east side, you have the Sacramento Mountains that are a little further away. And the light, the way the sun hits the dunes is just exquisite and magical. You get these beautiful shapes of and designs of shadows and bright areas. And the patterns, um, you know, the ripples in the dunes are just so um, beautifully designed. And um, then you have some flora in there as well. You have the soap tree yucca and you've got some wildflowers that just kind of um, punctuate the, the beautiful um, openness of these, these dunes. So the compositions that you can get from there are just endless. So once you get in and start driving on the dunes drive, you will notice a change in the environment. It, there's a lot of um, desert-like flora. Um, it's more flat at the beginning. And then as you go along a little further, you will begin to see the sand dunes. And um, as you go even more further, like about four miles or more, um, you'll see less flora and more dunes. The further you go, the more sand you're going to see. Along the way, you are going to see a lot of pull-off areas that you can park, and you can't park alongside the road. You have to pull into these pull-off areas. As you get towards the end, like around the six-mile mark, you're going to see more areas for parking. You're going to see bathroom facilities and picnic areas, which also means you're going to see more people. So once you park your car, you can go anywhere into the dunes from that point on. Now, there are some challenges that come with photographing in white sand. So let's talk about those challenges. First of all, um, by nature of being sand dunes that go on for miles, you can't just walk a straight line into the dunes. You're going to find that you're gonna have to go around, up and over the dunes, and you might think your truck or your car is right behind you, but if you are wandering around, um, you're not wandering in a straight path. So, uh, so the challenge is there um, is that it's easy to get turned around. So you're going to have to think about um, having a GPS. So you know, using the the magic rectangle GPS worked for me. I have Verizon, I had one to two bars, so I was able to get my GPS up on the screen at all times if I needed. I also had the compass, and I knew that the San Andreas Mountains were to my west, and the road was to the east of me most of the time, where I chose to go. So with the GPS on my phone, I was also able to mark where I was parked. So with the Bluetooth in the vehicle, um, your phone or your GPS on your phone should tell you where you are parked relative to where you are at that moment. So at the very least, bring a compass because what's going to happen is you're going to get into the dunes and you're, you're going to you're going to climb up one of those dunes and you're going to see in front of you and you're going to look and you say, I want to go over that way or that way. And you're going to try to get over there. And like I said, it's not a straight line to get there. So you have to be really mindful of where you are at all times. The other thing about getting around the dunes is obviously you are going to do some climbing up those sand dunes. Some of the dunes or most of them have a nice gentle slope that you can go up but you'll find that once you get to the top and if you want to go that way you're going to have to go back that way to get down because it might be a sheer drop off in front of you so you have to be very careful about walking around up over those dunes because um, they do get very very steep now the other challenge are um, the hours that are provided by the park um, when i was there it was great in the evening because i could be there at sunset and uh, for a short period after sunset. 
So that was really nice because uh, the evening, uh, the second evening I was there, um, I had some really nice clouds in the sky, so in some color. So I was able to stay past sunset for a little while, but you have to be careful about that because you have to be out of the park by 9 p.m., which meant that I had to close up shop about, oh, quarter after eight, walk back to the truck, and then drive out, um, and a long line of other cars were doing the same thing. So depending on where you're parked, you need to allow enough time to make that drive back to the entrance. Now, I did come back in the morning, and you know the downside is I couldn't get there until an hour after sunrise. But that wasn't a deal breaker for me. I actually really enjoyed that. And, um, you know, I was somewhat disappointed that uh, when I got there, I had a blank sky. There were no clouds whatsoever. The sun was already fairly high. But the effect on the dunes um, with the mountains in the background, it, it was just so lovely that um, it didn't bother me. And I ended up shooting for about two hours. Um, so it was three hours past sunrise when I finally stopped shooting. So the other challenge is, um, you know, uh, it is a sand dune, so there is sand possibly blowing in the wind and it can get very windy there. Um, I was there one evening when it was, it was quite windy, but um, it, I found that the sand there, that really fine gypsum sand, it's more like a dust when it's in the air which, you know, can be kind of a nice thing. Um, and I didn't have a difficult time protecting my equipment. Now, I did bring a, an Ikea bag because I knew that I would have to get into the bag um, and change lenses at some point. And I didn't want to have to have sand blowing all over my equipment when I did that. So I was able to protect it quite well doing that. Um, but that is something to, to be thinking about if you're going to go out there with more than one lens because you are going to have more than one lens, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But I think the biggest challenge, at least for me anyway, was that it, it was not easy. It wasn't impossible, but it wasn't easy to get away from people and their footprints, especially the footprints. Um, people I could get away from, I found that the farther in you walk, obviously, the fewer people you're going to see. When you're right by the road, you can't get away from people in the footprints. They're, they're everywhere. And actually, when I started examining a lot of my photos, especially um, zoomed in photos uh, where I was capturing something way off in the distance, I still saw footprints going across those dunes. So, um, so that was, you know, that was kind of disappointing. But, you know, that's just the way it is. People are in there photographing or doing whatever. Um, so be prepared to walk in. You know, don't just uh, shoot from the road. You're going to want to go in a ways. You're going to want to try to find some areas that um, are a little more pristine um, without those footprints all over. Okay, now for shooting. Um, if I could give you one piece of advice for um, when you come to White Sands to photograph, it is bring a wide range of focal length, uh, which means that you will probably have two or more lenses with you. Now for the wide angle shots, um, now ripples in the sand are a big draw because if you get down low and get those guys in the foreground, um, that you know they make for really nice leading lines and you can get some really nice composition. So, if you have a foreground interest like that, or like a plant, like the, um, the purple uh, verbena were in bloom when I was there, and the soap tree yuccas were you know, a nice focal point for the foreground. Um, so these sort of things work really well for your wide angle. And then if you have a really interesting sky and some color, of course, you wanna include some of that as well. I found the mid-range, what I call mid-range focal lengths, let's say um, 50 to, to 130, 150, mostly 70 to 75 millimeters. I found that to be um, very nice when I was standing on the floor of the dunes. So I was on the, the floor and the dunes were kind of surrounding me and I'm looking up at the top of the dunes and I could still see the San Andreas Mountains peeking over. And I was able to find some really nice intimate scenes um, at those focal lengths. And, you know, those minimalistic, lots of negative space, maybe a, a tree or two as a focal point, 
Um, really, really like those compositions. And that, like I said, it's just an endless possibility with those, um, that range of focal lengths. So what I found was is that the three days that I did shoot in the white sand, 70% of the time I shot at focal lengths of 75 to 400 millimeters. And in fact, the morning that I was there and I didn't have any clouds in the sky, almost half of my images were shot at 400 millimeters. So where that worked really well is when you get up on top of one of those dunes and you're overlooking that sea of dunes and you zoom in, you get those mountains and the dunes, you get them close together to each other and the contrast between the dunes and the mountains is just so lovely and you fill the frame with that. And if you get some directional light, so you don't have the sun directly behind you, but maybe off to the side, um, you just get these beautiful patterns in the dunes. The zooming in at 400 just worked really well for those types of shots. So I hope you do get to White Sands National Park. You won't regret it. Um, it is one of the most beautiful places on the planet.